welcome welcome again hello everybody welcome again to our um, Bible reading plan reading the Bible in chronological order I did say at the beginning that um, why we are reading the Bible in chronological order is so that we avoid people who will end up um, teaching things like oh the the dove that uh, you know Noah sent out flew until it landed on Jesus we don't want that and because that is not true there are lots of generations so we need to, between that time and, and and this time so there are 14 generations between Abraham and um, and um, the time of the exile 14 generation uh, Abraham to David from David to exile another 14 generation from the exile to Jesus Christ another 14 generations so it's a whole um, 52 generations between that time so there is no way that uh, would have been flying anyway so we carry on with judges chapter 13 judges chapter 13 is one of my favorite chapters because it really it speaks to me concerning concerning um, parenting look at this um, judges chapter 13 verse 2 to 5 it says and there was a certain man of Zora of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said to her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Um, now therefore beware, I pray thee, drink not wine, I think, or no strong drink, and eat not, um, and eat only, and eat not any unclean thing for lo thou shalt conceive and bear son and no razor shall come upon his head for the child shall be a Nazarene unto God from the womb and he shall um uh, da, da, da. okay this technology sometimes can do this to us uh, uh, there you go and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines this is speaking of Samson so uh imagine how much easier parenting would be if you just these children came with a manual i tell you i have raised so far my i'm raising seven children and the older kids who are in high school are five of them and two primary school children i tell you the way that each child has come out differently i wish each one came with a little label at the back that says do not wash do not <laughs> tumble dry and but Samson came with that and the and the Lord said um the the razor shouldn't come onto his head and already the mother was to be careful about what she she, she would eat so it really means that there are certain things that we ingest or certain things we allow in our lives during the time of pregnancy that affect our children and we must be alert um there's a a, a a parenting seminar that I did once and it should be there on Facebook you should follow that it was called vibes from the womb and um, when I'm talking about vibes from the womb I'm saying what are the things that happen in the womb that um, we should ensure uh, or make sure that they don't affect the child and after that we are told that you know the child was not supposed to cut their hair or oh, the minimum mistakes we would have made if children came with the manual I tell you like I'm telling you my children have come out so differently the drama I faced with Zozo the drama with Monga and the drama with Duma are just uh, amazing I, I wish there was a way I would have known and imagine if you knew what it is God had allowed you to carry um, Rebecca is told earlier on that she's uh, you know remember uh, earlier in Genesis we spoke about that that she's told that she's carrying two nations and you don't treat nations the same way you you treat individuals it's like a, a whole um, army uh, you can't treat an, a, a nation comes with big things and so you can't do anything and you can't treat a nation anyhow and so that would really really uh, help us hey so i'm trusting that you will learn uh, from the story and or oh, the other way around you might not have received an angel coming to you to speak about your child but it means that we can actually pray isn't it
We can pray and ask God to direct our path concerning the child, the children we are raising. So that you know, if you are raising a president, you raise a, 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 a president differently. You know, you won't allow them to, to just pee in the street whenever they need to and stuff like that. Anyway, so we carry on. Uh, Manoa himself then comes and says to God, please tell us if you go to chapter to chapter 13 of Judges, uh, verse 8 to 12, you, he comes and says, please tell us again. Um, I wasn't there. My wife heard you, yes, but I don't want secondhand information. I want you to tell us how it will be with this child. And the, the angel responds and God really comes through for them and they did their best to raise um to raise the child, you know, the best way that they could. Interestingly, as Manoah looks up, listen to verse 21, says, but the angel of the Lord did not appear more, or more to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that it was the angel of the Lord. So at the end of the encounter, they knew really that they had had a visitation of the Lord. But Manoah initially had not seen the angel. He had heard. So there are certain things that might have been said about your child. Prophetically, every time your child is prayed for, or even circumstances around them might be speaking concerning who they are. Just be sensitive and raise them according to the way that God wants him to be. Then Samson is born. And doesn't Samson come with drama? He is strong, but he has got so many character flaws. Oh my God. He's called by God. He's really anointed the chosen one who was spoken of from the time that he is in the womb. Um... And, um, but he's got so much drama. So it means that your child, as much as there's an assignment over their lives, oh man, now I'm beginning to preach for myself. They might pull some stunts. Samson is quite the man. Oh, look at chapter 14, verse 1 to 4 says, And Samson went to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath and the daughters of the Philistine. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I've seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, go get her for me. I want her. He, he has no regard. Maybe they made a mistake when they were raising him. They would say, oh, something we are afraid, you know, God has, a, has said this about you. And maybe the way they were telling him or the way they handled him made, them see, made him feel like he was... Um, this big thing. Imagine if you're raising a child who's supposed to take over as the next, um, as the next king or president. If you're not well trained, you would probably end up, um, you know, help, handling that child uh, with too much reverence. Yet they are still a child. So maybe that's a mistake that Manoah and and his wife made, such that he felt he could bully his parents around because probably they raised him with that fear that when this child came, angels came and oh, so we can't just do anything with him. So we must be careful as we are raising our children that when it's time to raise your child, raise them proper. Be a consistent parent, no matter what they're going to become. Foundations are important. They are not yet the king. They are not yet the president. He's not yet the, the champion, but he's still a child in the house. He must be raised as such. Even Jesus is said of him that he lived with Mary and, and Joseph in obedience. So we're seeing that uh, this boy did not even, um, uh, you know, did not know that uh, he, he, he he wanted that. So look at something interesting, but he says that, um, they say, well, how can you ask uh, for, a, for a wife from the uncircumcised Phil Philistines? But verse 4 says, but his father and mother knew not that it was the Lord um, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines had dominion over 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 Israel. So can you see how hearing from God and being sensitive to the spirit is important even when you're raising a child? Oh my God. So Samson begins a journey of defiling himself. Look at that verse 8 to 9. It says that of chapter 14, 14 it says that after a time he returned to take it and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion and behold there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion and he took thereof in his hand and went on eating and came to his mother and father and he gave them and they did eat but he told them not what he had taken honey from the carcass of a lion remember as a levite he was not supposed to to eat unclean stuff but here he is defying himself and being cunning enough to just go home and feed his parents on it 
without telling them, mm, Samson, the journey of defilement begins. Because once you start a little, in a little small, small way, you keep on pushing the line and pushing the line. So he keeps a secret from his parent. He, he has a weakness for women. Yo, he, he, he has a weakness for he, for women. And now there he is, he has a war now between himself and, and the, 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 the in-laws. Samson is just quite a handful. Look at that in verse 15 to 17. Um, uh, you know, on the seventh day that they said unto Sam, Sam, Samson's wife, entice thy husband that may dis declare to us, a, a riddle, le, um, lest we bend thee and thy father's house. And he gets an, a woman who, who starts to, you know, already start to to get secrets out of out of him before the big one comes along, Delilah. So he has a weakness. He has a weakness. He he has a weakness, and I think he has no sense of value of what it is that he is carrying. He doesn't understand that he is a, a, a man on assignment. And so for him, he thinks it's a, little, it's a little job. Next thing, here he is now. He is falling in love with a harlot. In Judges chapter 16, 1 and 2 says, And then Samson came to Gaza and saw there and a harlot and went into her. Hey, Samson, with all that strength, you are just going in. I almost said you are just waiting. <laughs> And then, because he's already going downward, he finally meets Delicious Delilah, his downfall. Delicious Delilah, the downfall, a triple D. Um, and it came to pass, now we're in chapter 16, verse 4 to 7, uh, that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Uh, when I was reading around, I found out that Sorek means sweet wine or fresh wine, dainty interesting little things and so delilah comes and, and delilah will sell will sell samson for money they promised a um, 11 1100 pieces of silver each and um there were these five kings of philistine so he looks she looks and she says ah five five thousand five hundred pieces of silver current um um Translation in, in the in the in US dollars that would be something like three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars or four hundred and fifty dollars. Um, you can find those facts. I actually put it on my book on uh, his daughters because I write a little bit about Delilah. And so finally, um, his downfall comes. And Samson is so selfish. Samson is selfish because he uses his power to fight his personal battles against the Philistines because of this wife and because. Of that and that um, instead of using it for what God had said and uh, unfortunately at this point he really doesn't even listen to his parents uh, Samson could he, they can't even give him direction and um, all you can do when you have a child who is going to be used mightily by God who's got a great future um, is that you can just pray for them um, he's using his power for himself and Samson said concerning them now shall I be uh, more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure. And Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took firebrands and bent them. Can you believe it? This, the power of God that he, he had been told was going to be used to, to deliver Israel. He's taking uh, you know, that power to use it for personal vendetta. I hope you're not using the gift of God for personal vendetta. Um, if, you're, if you're gifted and you know you're in the prophetic or whatever, don't abuse the gift of God. And I, I say prophetic because that's the most abused one. Um, yeah. And then the next thing we know that he, he they wake up in the morning and they find that it's Samson who has bent the, the place down. And, uh, <laughs> oh man, Samson, Samson, look at this. Judges 15, verse 18 to 20. And uh, he was so athirst and called out to the Lord. And... Thou hast given me great deliverance into the hands of thy servant, and now shall I die of thirst. And, ah, this boy. Um, but God clave a hollow from the, uh, that was on the jaw, and there came water thereof, and then uh, when he had drunk, his spirit came again and revived. Uh, therefore, he called the place En Hakor, which is in Elhi, in Lehi, and to this day, and he judged Israel for. 20 years. Hmm. He was there for 20 years. But you know, funny, as much as he's 
powerful by the Spirit of God. It seems that Samson is unclever. You know, he's not streetwise. He is, uh, <laughs> I don't know, he is, he, I don't understand, actually, how Delilah would keep on asking him the same question over and over again. And she keeps attempting to, to, to bring him down. And he stays, he keeps on staying with her. It's beside me. And I know, I know of many powerful men whose fall has been um, little things, Delilah-ish kind of things. I know powerful women whose fall has been Delilah-ish um, kind of things. May God deliver us from the tiny things. And the Delilah means dainty, delicious. Watch out for the delicious things. Hey, watch out uh, for the delicious things. And... Uh, Delilah is clear about her assignment. Says, I want to see what will make you an ordinary man. What are the things that are causing you to end up being an ordinary believer? You're ordinary. The power of God has left you because of little things. Remember how David, after he had uh, um, you know, committed his, the sexual sin with um, Bathsheba, one of the things he cries for is, please Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Because if that was... Mm. then there's nothing much left on me, Lord. Help me. So we can't allow ourselves to lose the things that make us extraordinary. Don't allow yourself to lose your time in prayer, your time in the Word. Don't lose the Holy Spirit. Don't lose time uh, of fellowshipping with others. I know after COVID, many people have struggled to gather again. So um, let's, let's allow God to to prompt us and to remind us of the things that we ought to do that keep us extraordinary. Wow, interestingly though, we realize that some, something powerful about our God. He's a God of second chances because in chapter 16 verse 22, the word of God tells us that how bad the hair on his head began to grow again. There is grace for you for your hair to grow back again. I don't know what mistake you've made. I don't know, uh, you know, you're probably struggling with a certain area in your life. I want to tell you that your hair can still grow again. Call on to God. And the word of God tells us that on his last day, Samson killed more Philistines than he had done before when he had his eyes. <laughs> Blessings. See you on the next video.